Hello. Hello. Welcome. Uh, this is the first broadcast of Focus on Art. <laughs> I'm Tracy. I'm Mary. And behind the camera is Leo. He, you will see him eventually at some point, I promise. But he's uh, he's uh, behind the camera now. And we're going to go to our first interview in uh, just a few minutes. Um, I actually have to, we've got quite an exciting one. I actually have to do this, um, bring him on camera, basically, because um, he's technical, a very busy guy. So do excuse not. me while I get closer to the camera. Well, bit, hey. Because I just have to <laughs> add him. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, so here we go. So I'm going to ask you to join. So just, um, we can still see you, even though I can just see some uh, text, but it's just... Um, do you need me to do a little dance? Well, you could do a dance with the parrot can if you want. You, can you speak from the chair there, if you can? Uh, no, I can't because I'm doing something at the moment. Because uh, uh, I want to know if he can, okay. he can hear. Okay, oh, you see, you, can, you can now hear Leo, can't you? I'm just trying yeah. to add somebody to the screen a minute. Hold on. So we're still trying to um, get the link. And this... Can you just check if Merrick's online a minute, just so you can see us? This worked perfectly last time, but he obviously can't see us at the moment. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> so the first technical hitch of the, of the series is we can't actually see anybody. Is your granny watching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. Dot com. Ask brother. viewers to join. Here we go. Hang on, I'll just do it again. <laughs> but it needs a viewer, first of all. <laughs> oh, he's got... Can you just ask Merrick if he's uh, in the link in the event? Otherwise, I'm going to need to start this again. <laughs> okay, this is really weird. Why isn't that working? Yeah, technology, don't, just don't you love it? <laughs> I should be like that that thing where, you know, they're holding the clown. <laughs> uh, oops, hang on, it's gone again. Well, we will get him in a minute. There are four people watching, so I apologise for the delay in this. <laughs> I'm just trying. You remember that, the old no, school thing, you know what I mean? Sorry? Like the old school. <laughs> Slight delay. If this doesn't work in a minute, we're going to have to do it the other way. I'm just going to have to do it the way we did it before. It should be working now. Isn't it like that? I think uh, <laughs> he has a send request. No what way. No, he's just joining the event. Sorry about this, folks. Oh, okay. Slight he's technical delay. What does it say on your thing? No, he's just joining the event. Sorry about this, folks. Slight technical delay. <laughs> <laughs> No swearing, no This will be perfect in a minute. It's just as well we started a few minutes early. Anyway, it's going to be a lot easier with the next two guests because they're in here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just Merrick is so busy we had to carry him on uh, on situ in the job. <laughs> ask who's to do it. I'm going to ask again. It doesn't say we actually got any viewers. You can see this, can't you? Where are you viewing me? Five, five views. Yeah, this is really strange. <clears throat> What's Merrick doing? Look to the look in the focus and art group. It's an event in the focus and art. I can stop this and start it again. We can sort Merrick out and tell him where the link is. Stop it. Yeah? yeah? If he goes to there, then, yeah, because he, he has to view it and then he can, um, but it's not actually showing any viewers, which is a little bit concerning. This was so you easy. Send that request, yeah, this was so easy last time. <clears throat> awesome. So is he looking for the link? So I'm going to ask for more time. Because I can only do this 10 times and then it will stop. I've just uh, 
save them in the link. Okay. In the meantime, lovely to have everyone there. Yes, I think we've got a few viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being patient. It's yeah, our first sorry. one. So we are trying. Ah, here, here he is. is. Here we he got is. him. We got him. Hang on. Thank goodness for Seven. that. Okay, send me a request. Oh. In a minute, we should be joined by Merrick. So tell him we've just sent a request. We have to accept it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we will. And then we'll be able to start with our, our program. But as I said, the next one. What's that saying? Oh, there he is. Hey, hey. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you doing? Oh, good, good. good. Thank you. Can you hear us? I'm going to turn the volume up a bit because I don't think. Hang on, excuse me. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. We can hear you just about. <laughs> okay. Where are you? I am currently painting this huge mural in a warehouse, furniture warehouse. Uh, wow. This is extending on a platform. <laughs> really <hard. laughs> Don't fall off it. <laughs> With the excitement of being on here. <laughs> Yes. So, Mary, introduce yourself to the guests and, um, and just say a little bit about who you are and what you do. All right. Uh, sorry, I'll just go a little bit lower so I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be safe, please. Yeah, nah, there we go. So, I am a Miroslav Lukan, or Lukan Art, as, uh, as known as an artist. And I'm a Czechoslovakian born, about UK living. Uh, and working artist and being for the last uh, nearly 20 years now. Uh, mainly doing sort of uh, big murals, illustration, that kind of stuff. Great, great. So, um, that's great. So, tell us a bit about what made you influence, what influenced you to become an artist? Uh, so, there were some very, very early influences. Uh, we're talking, uh, firstly, my mum, she was great with pencil. So watching her, you know, doing all the drawings and, and uh, learning shading, you know, and like that from her. And I have to say, she's uh, uh, a huge, huge on detail. So that was always with me, you know, quite photorealistic, all that. And at the time, I think she was, uh, she was drawing horses mainly. Aww. So that was great. Cool. Uh, then also, from my dad's side, my granddad, uh, he was an oil painter. Oh. So kind of being surrounded by that and just, just the smell of oil paints and stuff. That was brilliant. So it was always around me. Uh, I don't know to do it much or not, that was not a question because it wasn't really maybe viewed as a most uh, viable option in terms of life and earning and stuff like that, which, which is still tricky, but that's the reality of it. But uh, yeah, that's how it was. So you grew up in an artist environment, basically. Um, you can say that, yeah. <laughs> you, you say one of your family uh, painted in oils. Were you ever tempted to paint in oils yourself, or I um, mean, you don't obviously being up a, a cherry picker or you know in the warehouse, it's not exactly oil painting, is it? So, <laughs> how did you get to that? I have only tried oil actually for the first time about two months ago. To a friend of mine, another artist here, Lorena, uh, she's an oil painter, and so she let me have a try. Think is, and this is possibly where I was firstly a little bit scared of oil, and just because of it, technique and being blending and all that stuff. Secondly, as you see what I'm using as a color, this is before the outlines go on behind me, I'm, I tend to use block color rather than mix up together. Reason for that is, and this actually is genetics uh, through my granddad, the oil painter. Uh, I'm uh, slightly colorblind. <laughs> are you? Didn't know yeah. that. So what colors uh, are you seeing behind you then? <laughs> well, I do sometimes, but uh, I'll tell you what, like the green behind me, yesterday painting that green, half of the time I thought it's gray. You know, oh, really? so depending on the lights changing and stuff like that, my, my eyes just go crazy like that so sometimes. How do you cope you know? with that? Yeah. Um, I read labels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't know what shade it is. <laughs> or does that not matter? Okay. Matching the color is sometimes an issue. So yeah. I literally have to go with, uh, often I design stuff, either just going around that color wheel on Photoshop and don't ask me what the color is, but I thought, okay, it feels right. It looks nice, you know, and let's go by that. Then I try to match that color in a paint shop somewhere, trying to choose the paint. 
not necessarily myself. Often I have to ask the staff to help me. Okay, can you match what's on my phone with uh, what's on your shelves? Uh, or um, uh, example, using graffiti paints when outside on the walls. There are reasons uh, I'm going uh, painting with uh, Montanas because they actually a part of the code on them is the is the color itself. So it might say I don't know Madrid red. So it would have some sort of whether whether another brands might just say Dallas and I don't know what color that means. You know, okay, it's like lipstick, isn't it? But they all, yeah. all these, <laughs> similar they actually. Make yeah. these, make all these names up, don't they? And you think how the hell do they make yeah. that name up? That's I true. Like lo lo loads of them go by cities and all sorts of other stuff, but at least with this brand, I know it helps me because I can yeah. group up red by red because it says red, whatever it looks like to me. Mm. So that, that's kind of helpful. And then I'm just looking at it and kind of see what's brighter, what's lighter and, and stuff like that. I suppose that's when you so get to know a brand as well, mm. you get to know nice. what their colours yeah. colors are like in terms of the the, the richness yeah. of it, mm. the, you know, That's the durability, etc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a really interesting point, actually. So the that's also why I prefer to go black and white or strong, bold colours because it's kind of safer for me and that's that's how my whole style developed as well. Because I actually started, same as I started with mum, uh, drawing, I started as a pencil artist. And for many years I was working as a pencil artist and working on highly detailed commissions, whether it was cars, motorbikes, you know, occasional portraits, loads of architecture, mm. things like that. But I could go highly detailed, uh, hyper-realistic with black and white. And yeah. that I had no issue with. But as now playing with color, I need to play to my strengths or weaknesses, to say. <laughs> and just trying to go sort of bold, flat color. And uh, occasionally I need help. Or often I need help, you know, with choosing as well. But... That's how it is. So, do you do uh, smaller pieces anymore, or are you are you focusing more yeah. on like the large pieces, like you're working on now? Is that more your type of work no. now? Both. Um, I like going large. That's a good challenge. And it's <laughs> not nice from the distance. The impact impact of it is very very different as well. Also, loads of them are a lot more public, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I still love going black and white or small scale illustrations or occasionally even pencil work, you know, back into yeah. it because that's where my strength was before. Uh, it's just now uh, don't, don't have that much time to do stuff for myself. So it's mainly commission based. And the thing is because most people know me for large scale stuff, these ones don't come often anymore, you know. So, so it's kind of when I have time, you know, or occasionally I might do a little study on a site, you know, stuff like that. But also that helps me because uh, I, I don't like every day to be the same. So it's nice to jump from one discipline to the other and, and one day work on a big wall, next day do a little illustration or pencil work, you know, and next day go out uh, with a camera, for example. Yeah. Mm. I have looked at, sorry to interrupt there, but I have looked at some of your really lovely um, photographs, really nice sunsets and stuff like that you do uh, some really nice people. photography work as well thank you now i mean the camera camera and photography work was always with me as well and that's actually uh my dad uh used to be a photographer he used to have a dark room you know so i remember that as a kid as well so although i might be shooting digital I actually grew up around uh real photography not that okay. digital, not real it's just a little bit more practical but uh, and then he was always with me since a young age through through my travels, you know, and um, and I still capture outside the natural beauty and all that stuff, you know, and travel stuff. But right now it also became a tool in terms of capturing the artworks, you know, and and uh, loads of illustrations. I might do loads of those jobs. Um, I still don't I, I don't work digitally, so I still like to start with a physical illustration, which then I obviously have to digitalize later if needed. Uh, so that, again, I would use a camera for and uh, rather than scanning it in, you know, and then, you know, play with things in Photoshop and stuff. Yeah. Can you go through the process of doing a big wall mural? How mm. do you get your image onto uh -huh. such a big, big... So you start with sketches. You, well, ideally you want to go and see, physically see the wall beforehand uh, 
sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes I work from the photos, but that you're risking, you, you don't quite know what the wall is like, what the material is like, you know, and kind of have to rely on a customer. Then often you come and see, I don't know, uh, the grooves might be much deeper. So again, you need to change the painting technique and things like that. But uh, of, of, you always start with the sketches, you know, and often there is a there and back process, you know, with the client, you know, until, until they are happy. And because often it's not the first design, it might be second, third, fifth yeah. design, you know, which you actually settle on. And uh, that's just part of the process, which is fine. But uh, even that, that's just a sketch. That's just the idea. Once you actually work with a with a physical wall, uh, things might change, things might move. I react to the to the wall, to the space itself. Yeah. I might realize, hang on, there's a light coming from the other side. Can I use that to my advantage, you know, or change the design slightly? Or there's the door here, which wasn't on a design sketches. So how to incorporate that, things like that. Yeah. So mm. it always shift a little bit, you know, when you try to work with the environment. Mm. Yeah, how long is, I mean, how big is the piece you're working on at the moment? I mean, we can see only a section of the wall behind you, but how big is it? Um, mm -hmm. big. <laughs> it's, it's, big. it's monstrous. It's a, it's a big, big warehouse. Uh, we're talking maybe 25, 30 meters if I go around by uh, five, six, five. 25, 30 meters. Good grief. Yeah. That is big. <laughs> How long is that going to take you? <laughs> um, this is my second week on it, and uh, I'm definitely going to use up this week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm being ambitious. How long does it I'm, normally take to do it? I'm hoping your... to finish this week. Uh, again, depends if it's inside or outside mural on the scale and on the material very much. This, I mean, this one would, being, being realistic, might have been a, a four-day job if I was doing it with spray paint. Mm. Uh, because of where it is and because they still have um, uh, customers coming in obviously I can't spray paint mm. also because of all the furniture which is uh, for sale under me as well or, you know, with spray painting you have a bit of a dust coming down you know stuff mm. like that so I yeah. can't be risking uh, obviously now working with the brushes here or rollers uh, on this scale uh, uh, you often have to do multiple coats. Again, that's something also because it's a breeze block. Uh, so half of the time you have the actually brick peeling and it's highly absorbent and all these things. So that's why the process takes so much longer, sadly. Yeah. I wish I could spray it. It would be much quicker, but sometimes... <laughs> yeah. It all takes time, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It takes time. Well, Mary, Mary prepared all these questions, like really interesting, quirky questions, as you know Mary is. So, uh, would you like to pick one of your quirky questions? One of my quirky questions? Okay. All right. <laughs> so. We're going to spice the interview up now to, to reveal the real Mary. <laughs> no, it's right. It's not like that. I mean, <laughs> if you were to look. It's, it's going to walk joking. away in a minute. It's going to walk away. Um, if you were to choose a character, cartoon or whatever, who would you be and why? Okay, I have a builder cutting uh, wood behind me. Can you repeat the question? I really couldn't, couldn't hear yes, that. there were some interruptions there. It's typical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My big ch mark chance to get it out. Um, so if you were a cartoon character or any kind of character, what would you be and why? Or who would you be and no, why? No, you know this is a Mary question, don't you? Because <laughs> I love cartoons. <laughs> but you do very caricature things, I just want to ask. I know. It's, it's a good question, though. And it is, yeah. I'm going to revert to my childhood. <laughs> and I think I'll be, I'll be a combination of Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack. <laughs> what was that one? Samurai Jack. Oh, really? And why yeah. would you want to be them? Because uh, there's a bit of a geekiness and a bit of a crazy adventure, <laughs> you know, combined there. And I it's think I can identify with both. <laughs> Definitely. That's brilliant. See, that was my little question. That's all good. <laughs> I'm going to read another Mary question. Um, and this is quite a good one, actually, I think. Yeah. Um, hang on. What is the best advice that you've been given? Hmm. In, in terms of life or in terms of art? 
Mary's question, what, what were you thinking? Well, it could be either, really. Yeah. Life, in terms, art, I'd like to know in terms of art, art actually. Art, art. Actually, I'll tell you what. Uh, there's one which, not necessarily it was given, I think it was learned, <laughs> and applies to both, to life and to, and to work. Uh, take it slow. Take it slow. Take slow it slow. And steady. Wins well, the race. Exactly. It's exactly. like the tortoise and the hare, isn't it? I always <laughs> refer to that. You know, that story. And, I'm, and yeah, I mean, my, my life could be very hectic often, but ultimately I'm trying to to take things a little bit more easy, you know, and slow everything down a bit, you know. As as a, as much as I love being busy, I, I need to take a breather sometimes, you know, and go out and recharge <laughs> a little bit more. Take time for yeah. yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's that work balance, isn't it? And yeah. learning about that work life balance. Which I'm not good with and I mean last two weeks is a good example. I've been working about eighteen hours a day, you know. Yeah. So uh, pretty much seven days a week and that's oh, working yes. on multiple projects and that's how it is, you know. So kind of start do three hours on illustration or digitally from like seven in the morning few hours on a wall here or all day on a wall and then I go home and work again till midnight or past midnight and that's how it is most days so it's nice to occasionally have a day off and spend it in nature yeah. with a camera or yeah. even discipline you know and see the sunset or something I'd like to leading off from that because obviously you're very very busy um do how do you feel about inspiration I mean do you ever get so busy you lose inspiration is that where does the Where's the line between creativity and work? And in what inspires you and you really want to do something and then you just have to do something. Do you ever feel like that? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, but... Um, answer to that is... It's getting better now with... Uh, now, now I'm in a situation where I tend to choose the jobs rather than just taking anything, you know, just, just to pay the bills. And having the choice allows me to have a bit more freedom in terms of design and variety and things like that. So so it doesn't feel like something at all anymore. Sometimes, obviously, then the job might go off. That happens, you know, and sometimes you're glad you just finish it and that's over. But uh, genuinely, now I'm in a situation when I... I try to make sure it's interesting for me as well as a job as well and that helps mm. and i suppose because you've built up your reputation mm. a lot of people will come to you knowing that you they know what you're going to be doing does that make sense they'll it actually does. trust your judgment on what the design mm. is and so yeah, yeah. That, that that's good when people know the style already and that all that as a design process you go down back and you are being given different amounts of freedoms on a job. Yeah. Uh, generally, expectations are such that you can just start with the sketches rather than a highly detailed, this is exactly what it's going to be because yeah. that's what it used to be sometimes, which, which then almost means you do the same work twice, which, which kind of doesn't make sense as well. And then it means the second time you might not enjoy it as much. Yeah. Um, whereas this way, uh, it, it, it's much easier and clients are now understanding to okay this is the sketch this is the idea the real thing happens real magic happens on a wall you know or, because they're paying you for the style aren't they ultimately so they they'll go well we know Again, what you do because you've worked a lot around to Bournemouth haven't you to build a reputation and to I mean there, there are jobs in the past I took which I'm not proud of uh, I wouldn't publish them because Yes, they were creative as a, but it was more of a box ticking exercise. And yeah, some of them I just took to pay the bills. And but mm. yeah, it sucked like out, out, out of me a little bit. So yeah. some some jobs you just don't feel that's the thing. And but this this is where I'm now where I'm trying to choose the jobs which I'm okay. I, I can have some fun doing it, and yeah. it makes different. Yeah, that's which is fun. great. So, well, that leads us on to another Mary's questions. <laughs> Um, Mary wants to know, um, what am I reading your questions? I don't know why you're doing it. Uh, what piece of work are you most proud of and why? <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, piece? It would have to be a uh, 60 million postcard wall. Oh, yeah. Big, big wall on the side of the bar there. The because... Oh, I know that one. I yeah. like that one a lot. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, how long did that take you to do? It's absolutely huge as a wall. And yeah. so uh, talking sort of three levels of scaffolding and then back and I was on that for a few weeks, but uh, it's a wall. Firstly, it's in Boromat, which is where I live. So that's nice. But it was the wall I was kind of always wishing to paint. And I know it was painted several times before. I was like, oh, I wish I could paint something like this one day. And up to the up till that point, I have never painted anything on that large scale. Oh, really? So that wow. same changes for me as well. Also, big learning thing because yeah, I've done some spraying before. Uh, that wall was done with spray paints, but again, never thing or ne never anything on this scale, you know. And also this colorful. That that for me was quite a big difference as well because most of the stuff before was uh, black and white. Even, even some of the murals I've done, some of the bigger works I've done before, they were black and white. So that was one of your first color pieces? Actually, full color. Wow. Uh, still kind of trying to mix it with my style, but go full color. Yes, was challenging. Yeah. But nice. And uh, and surprisingly, it's it's still there. And it's been there for about, I don't know, five years or something like that, which is quite unusual. Oh, for you kind recently of touched it up, didn't you? A couple of years back, that's just because uh, I wouldn't necessarily touch it up if someone, I don't know, graffiti is yeah. over, you know, stuff like that. That's just part of it, but uh, a bit of a bit of a wall of your work. Yeah, sometimes that happens, but it is what it is. On 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 that one, I only touched it up because. Uh, I think there was ivy or something growing behind a section of the wall, which then kind of destroyed the wall, make it come down, and and it was just it was just random white block suddenly, and that just didn't look good. So that's that's mm -hmm. why. But generally, I tend to leave them as they are, kind of being street art. It's it's nature of it. Yeah. No, I love that mural. It's really eye catching. I mean, for those people that are in Bournemouth or around Bournemouth, um, I can't remember the street it's on. What's the name of the street? I'm going to describe it. It's near the BH2, isn't it? Yeah, it's just the Iron Cinema. Road, isn't it? What's the road what's called? The road? Don't know. Don't know what's the road 60 called. 60 million postcards. <laughs> Yeah. 60 million photos, 60 million postcards, and between them and the cinemas connecting to the yeah. Bournemouth yeah. Garden. So if you ever want yeah. to get down to see yeah, it, go and have a look. It. It's, a, it's a huge mural and it is really eye catching. It's a, a really That's nice mural. Really I wish cool. there were more walls in Bournemouth that had those sorts of murals on personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is over 100 yeah. meters. So at the time, that was the largest thing by a big margin I ever painted. So since then, I've done larger one, but uh, some large floor murals as well and playgrounds and stuff like that that would be larger in scale. but as a wall, that definitely was the largest. Well, we have uh, something called Kirsty Johnson watching at the moment, oh, and yes. she's saying, great Hi, to see Kirsty. you on here. And uh, it's lovely to see you speaking about the amazing work you do, she's saying. So, and she thinks 60 million also is awesome. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we, meant to, we meant to say at the beginning, actually, for people watching, if you want to ask questions of any of our guests, then, you know, you, you can easily just, you yeah, know, message come online and basically okay, send okay. a message. Thanks, Kirsty, for writing yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's really good how are we doing for time we've got to wind up in a minute i think, I think so, so yeah. yeah it's been really interesting yeah. having you on merrick and um you are the first you are the first guest so uh we're yeah. really happy with yeah, it's really great. You on and it was really great to understand where your processes come from and where you know your background as well you oh. know not many people know that about you yeah. you know right. and what you do and how what your influences were so i think this is a really good platform to actually get to understand yeah and actually it makes you appreciate your work even more does that make sense yeah. so if anyone's watching it's you know when people are watching it that's what it does isn't yeah, it? yeah absolutely yeah. so what's your next project if you've got one um, so the next you. i'm working um on a couple of projects actually and there's a um, very very interesting one for me which is a, a music studio for a school okay but uh, there i'm mixing uh, quite within my style within illustration style but quite realistically musical instruments which is okay. quite dear to me uh That's with a so underwater so different, then, to you. which is again loads of marine creatures you know and so interesting combination of themes there i'm having real fun with that um and uh, there's a a uh, robot mural coming for one of the uh, one of the digital offices, which is going to be quite fun. Mm. So we're going to go kind of 
80s style robot, something like that there. And they will be Not much yet. That's going to be fun. Hi, Chris. Chris is watching. Chris is saying it's Exeter Road. So there you go, guys. If you Thanks, want to guys. see this, and the people that are going to watch this later when it's saved to the group, uh, it's Exeter Road if you want to see Merrick's work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the road. Yeah. And along Great. the beach as well. Don't forget the beach. Is that all still there? Oh, oh yeah. And the seafront there. ones are still yeah. there as well. They are, aren't they? Yeah, go along the beach. And there's a, there's the a fish fishing <laughs> river. That was part of the project we done uh, with one of the local galleries, which sadly doesn't exist anymore, and the uh, council. And a bunch of artists kind of took over the seafront, just trying to demonstrate, hey, come on, guys, we can actually do this. Use local guys, use lo local artists, and we can get you all this free press. And, um, you know, we managed to get you know, all the yeah. crews down, you know, for it, and loads of press, you know, in the papers and stuff like that. And all free advertisement for Bournemouth. And... And it was nice. They gave us the platform to, as an artist, to do that as well. So yeah, it's yeah, definitely right. more. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, well, we're going to have to bring it to an end. So yeah, it's thanks so much, yeah. Merrick. That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the Thanks confusion for in the beginning with the link. <laughs> technical hitch with the technical departments. But, clear, yeah. yeah, the focus on our technical department was quite crappy today. <laughs> <me> but, that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so amusing, but it was a very interesting interview. So thanks for being, uh, thanks for being with us again. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And good brilliant. luck. Good luck with good your mural. See you soon. And we'll be back. We'll be back in a minute with uh, our next guest, uh, who is Chris, who is a poet. So that's going to be starting in about 10 minutes time. So um, get a coffee. Yeah, get coffee. And basically, um, yeah, join us again. Get a mug of coffee and a bicky and Whatever sit on the sofa. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute for the next one. Bye. Bye.